Hey everyone, I'm Zueb Khan and I'm a front-end engineer. In this video, I'll continue with the introduction to NGRX Component Store. We covered updaters and selectors in the previous video. Now let's introduce the concept of effects. Effects in Component Store are used to implement side effects in your application. They help isolate that functionality and keep it away from components, which are then more pure and only responsible for selecting data and triggering effects updaters. If you're familiar with Redux and NGRX store, the concept is very similar. In practice, this means your network requests and other operations such as showing dialogues can be shifted to your effects. Let's get back to your, our contacts app now and see how we can add effects to it. Now currently with updaters and selectors, the app only works on the data hard coded in the app. In a real app, you'll almost always get data from an external API call. To simulate that process, first, I'll create a service using the Angular CLI. And I'll do ng generate service. And we'll put it in our services folder. We'll call it contacts. Let's go in our service. And instead of using a real API, I'm going to copy in a set of functions which behave like an API would. So all of the logic for adding and deleting contacts is contained here. I've also added a slight delay so that it seems like an API call. So assuming our API calls are encapsulated in our service, let's get back to the store. The first thing that we need to do is to remove our initial contacts list because we are going to call the fetch contacts API to get it. So let's delete this. Let's then create an effect to fetch our contacts. We'll call it fetch contacts and we'll use this dot effect. Now an effect can take in uh, any type of parameter, but here we don't have any. So we'll use a default parameter trigger. The standard way then is to return trigger dot pipe and then add your functionality. In our case, we'll just add a switch map operator to the stream. Let's add a switch map. Of course, we also need to include the contact service so that we can call our fetch contacts function. Here we'll be just calling this dot contact service dot fetch contacts. And once we get the data, we can add a pipe and deal with it. Next, we'll use a tap operator to then update the state with the new contacts data. Let's create an updater first though. We'll name it set contacts. We'll do read only set contacts. And this will be a simple updater where we'll, the input would be the state and our contacts list. And we'll just use the spread operator to maintain the state, but change the contacts with the values that we get. State and contacts. Now let's call this dot set contacts with the value in our tap operator. Also, even though we have a dummy API, which will never return an error, but a standard way to handle errors is to add a catch error operator in this inner pipe so that any errors can be handled. Currently, I'm just returning empty here. Let's do that now. Catch error and we'll return empty here. This is important because otherwise the effect will stop working as soon as an error occurs. Great. So we have created our first effect. Not that difficult, was it? Now all we have to do is to call our fetch contacts effect to load our contacts initially. We can do that conveniently in the contact store constructor. Since the store is initialized, when the component is initialized, this is perfect for our case. Okay, let's test this out and see if our contacts are being fetched. Great, it's all working fine. So now that we have the data with us, let's create the effect to add a new contact. Let's remove our existing updater called add contact. Since we don't need it, we'll create an effect called add contact. And this time, we can give it a type of contact since we know we are going to send in the contact.
This tells the effect to expect a contact object when it's being called. So our parameter this time will be contact and we'll pipe into it. Next, we'll add a switch map as before and call our add contact function in the service. When the contact has been added, we pipe into it and we simply call our fetch contacts effect again so we can get the fresh set of data. Simple, right? Let's do that. Let's also add the catch error operator here for completeness. Great. The cool thing about the component store is that the way we call our updaters and effects are exactly the same. So if you go in your header, you'll see that it's being called in the same way as we would call an updater. Before it was an updater that was being called, this time this would be an effect. We won't have to change anything. Let's test this out. Let's add a new contact. And great, the contact has been added. Okay, so for the delete, it will work along the same lines. So let me just quickly copy in the code I already have and test it out. Let's test it out. There's a slight delay, uh, but that works well as well. You, now you'll notice one thing though, there's a delay in the API call, but there is actually no spinner or loader to tell us our network call is in progress. So let's quickly add the hot toast library for notifications about progress. Let's do, uh, quickly do ng add ng neat hot toast. The hot toast package allows us to add the notification functionality as part of the RxJS stream. In our case, this will be part of our effects since that is the point where we call our API functions. Note how we don't need to add anything to our component which remains pure. Let's include the toast service first. Then we'll add the toast observe operator to the fetch contacts effect. Just after we start the pipe here. For loading, we'll give it a message of fetching. And for success, an error will give similar messages, contacts fetched and could not fetch. Let's test this out now. Great. So now we have a notification to tell the user what is happening while the API loads data. We can do the same with the add contact and the delete contact effects. I'll skip it here for now and just show you how it looks. I did it here and added it on delete. And let's test this again. Let's try deleting first. It says deleting contact and then says deleted. And then it fetches the contacts again. Then we're going to add a new contact quickly. It says add a contact and in this it says contact has been added. Great. Lastly, we can do one more refactor of our component to make it even purer. That is side effect free. If you had noticed closely, you would have seen I'm showing the add dialog in our component in header. Since it's a side effect, it should be shifted to an effect itself. Let's do that now. In the store, we are going to add a new effect called show add dialog. Show add dialog. This won't have any parameter. So we are just going to give it the default. We'll return trigger dollar pipe and we'll start a switch map as before. Of course, we also need to include our dialog service, but first we'll copy this till after closed the observable. I'm just going to paste it in. We are going to include our dialog service here now. Then we'll import our component and then add a pipe to the after close variable. Next, as before, we'll add the filter to check whether the dialog returned some values or was cancelled. So we'll check whether there is any value returned from it or not. If it is, then we're, we will handle it in the tab operator and we will just call our previous add contact effect with the contact. 
So you can see network calls are not the only use case for effects. Opening dialogues in prompts is another one. Now all we have to do is to call the show add dialog effect from our component and not worry about anything else because the rest will be handled by the store. Let's delete all of this and replace it with this dot contact store dot show add dialog. Let's test this out. Let's click on add and put in our data. Great, so it works as before. So you can see how useful component store effects can be in structuring your business logic in your apps. Overall, NGRX component store is a very small but useful library which should be your go-to state management tool at the component level at least. If you have a simple app or a self-contained component with not much sharing of data, this would be perfect for you. I hope you liked this introduction to state management in Angular. If you did, be sure to subscribe to my channel for more. Thanks for watching.